Alright, in this video we're having a look at how we bias our JFETs to be able to use them. Now I'm going to put particular emphasis on switching, because that's normally what we do with these devices, but we will also quickly cover a couple of other biasing conditions for amplifiers as well. Now remembering from our drain curves, in fact I'm going to have one drain curve, ID versus VDS, and I'm going to put the IDSS, so VGS equals zero volts, remember from maximum current flow, IDSS, and then the regions associated with this is our ohmic region and our active region. So as I've said in the previous videos, ohmic region basically is equivalent to a resistor, so it's a voltage controlled resistor, whereas in the active region it's basically equivalent to a current source. So voltage controlled current source. In both cases I'm talking about voltage controlled because remember we can control VGS. That's our manipulated variable or, or the voltage that we can control on our circuit. When we want to be operating a JFET as a switch, typically we want to be operating somewhere down here. Now there's a couple of reasons for this. And they'll just give us a little bit more room. So JFET as a switch. One good switches. have low R on. All right, in other words, that the resistance of our switch, when it's on, so off, we want it to be effectively an open circuit, and when it's on, we want it effectively to be a resistor with zero ohms. Now, in practicality, we're always going to have milliohms, even with copper, but with a FET especially, we're not going to get milliohms, well you might with a really good one, but it's unlikely, um, with our particular FET. So we want to have a really low on resistance. And the reason is to minimize the volt drop across the switch. A, because that's useless voltage that we're dropping that's not getting to our load, and B, because it minimizes power dissipation across the switch, or in this case, the FET. So we want to have a low resistance. Now, you see here that we can calculate what's known as the resistance from drain to source as very roughly V over I, so the voltage over uh, VDS divided by ID, and you'll see that if we were to operate way over here, uh, well over in the active or saturation region, what will happen is that for the same current, we're, all we're doing, the further we go this way, is increasing the voltage. So as we increase VDS, ID stays the same and RD goes S. So the further we go in this direction, the more likely it is that we're going to have a higher or in fact it is likely that we're going to have a higher resistance and therefore be an inefficient switch. So we want to put our switch somewhere in the ohmic region, somewhere preferably along this line here, so the nice linear region, or the linear uh, point of this uh, ohmic region. Now. If we wanted to switch the maximum amount of current, you might say, well, let's put it here. Okay. The problem is, is that theoretically and ideally that could work for one JFET, but with multiple JFETs, which are going to have slightly different IDSSs and slightly different internal resistances and amount of doping and so forth, different temperatures they operate at and all sorts of things, this can go up and down a bit. And you don't want, for example, same circuit to be built, but because of that, where you put that, you end up way over here, getting your device way too hot. All right? 
So what we do to be safe is we put our cue point, as we discussed uh, in the previous videos, in the middle of the omic region. All right, it doesn't have to be directly in the middle there, but that's practically where we want it to go. Somewhere, sort of, I would normally say within this range here, depending on the amount of current you're trying to switch. Safest is obviously the further back you come down here. So we want to be in the omic region when we're switching, just reiterating, because we want to minimize the RDS and minimum BDS, minimum voltage drop across our device. Okay, minimize the voltage drop. It's going to happen the further we come this way. All right, but the further we go this way, the less current we get as well. So there's a compromise. We're going to have some voltage drop across the device because it doesn't have zero ohms resistance. So for a given current that we need to be able to switch, we need to be able to accept that we will also have some voltage drop across this device. But hopefully it will be very low. So, how would we go about biasing a uh, JFET to do this? Well, the easiest way to do it is what's known as a hard bias, or gate, sorry, a fixed or gate bias. Once again, I'm working with in-channel JFETs, only because they're easier to understand. And in this case, all I've done here is RD is my load. Okay, that's what I'm trying to switch. Or okay, it could be an LED or uh, some other device. RG is a gate resistance, and I'm going to go call that one actually VG rather than in this case connecting it to ground. And this is my JFET with a voltage up here. Now this is a gate or fixed bias. And the reason that we use this is because it has hard saturation, which is fully on JFET. Right? Because if we were to connect VG equal to zero volts, then we're going to get the maximum current flow through this device, right? just like we've seen in the FET introduction. So VG equals zero, we get maximum current flow through this device, and therefore maximum current through our load. Whereas if we were to apply VG equals VGS off, okay, ID will be equal to zero. So we could also do so on, switch off this device. This needs to be a voltage source if we actually want to be able to switch this device. Otherwise, we've just left the device on. We're not actually using it as a switch. All right, so this is the control voltage here. So gate bias, really all it is is one resistor or the load. Okay, or sometimes it can be a combination of both. This value of resistance here is not uh, overly important. Um, in fact, what you could do here is rather than um, apply VG through this resistor, is you could apply VG here, ground this point, make that a nice big resistor. And this is now a pull down resistor. So, unless we apply a negative voltage here, this is now guaranteeing that this device stays on, regardless of if this one's floating or not. Okay, so that's probably a better way than what I'd had before. Okay, so now our control voltage is here. And this is our pull down. All right, in terms of working out what is the maximum current that could flow through the circuit, okay, well, the maximum current that could flow through our FET, we can use IDSAT. Now, this is not IDSS, 
Okay, IDSS is remember the FET in isolation. IDSAT is given by VDD over RD, which is the maximum amount of current that can flow based on the fact we have a current limiting resistor. It might be the load, but it's still limiting the current. All right, and we also have uh, can calculate <coughs> if required uh, or specified. We can specify the um, RDS from parameters such as if we can work out the voltage drop across this FET um, over ID, for example, uh, and so forth. So ID set is the max current flow in this circuit rather than the FET in isolation. Okay, this is the well, resistance. It's not constant. Right, if that was a particular interest to us. And really, we can actually treat the circuit as this is modelled as a resistor. And then it basically just looks like a resistive divider. That's all it looks like. So it can be a very simple uh, analysis using the gate or fixed bias. Uh, it doesn't have to be complicated. So gate bias, we have drain resistor, and we control the voltage at the gate. Pull down for safety. It's not required, but practically you'd want it. Um, and you can then calculate through from there what the circuit conditions would be. And remember, if you have a set of drain curves, put on VDS ID. There's IDSS. Remembering we won't get that. We'll get to ID set and VDD. Draw a line between them. There's our Q point, and we're going to plan. That should be in the ohmic region. Why is it in the ohmic region? Well, this device is following the VGS equals zero volt line when this device has zero volts applied here. So we're going to be on the longest set of drain curves. Remember our drain curves, if we're on VGS equals um, some other smaller voltage, we could fall off much faster and end up in the saturation region over here. So with VGS equals zero, we guarantee we've got the longest period of time that we're going to stay within the ohmic region. Okay, there's no other voltage we could apply. It would give us more uh, operating room within the ohmic region. And we know that we're going to have ID sat less than IDSS, VDD somewhere uh, along this axis here doesn't matter where I now put VDD, I'm going to end up with this line intersecting my drain curve somewhere within the ohmic region. It's not possible unless ID sat goes up here um, for our, our Q point to move into the saturation region. So we're constrained by the circuit and the characteristics of the FET to operate in the ohmic region, which is what we want, and it's nice in the middle uh, like we talked about in here. All right, a couple other circuits for you to be um, aware of is the self-bias configuration. And this one's normally used for active region or the saturation region. And we haven't really talked about this in the course and I'm not planning to, but be aware that Self-bias is nothing more than adding an extra resistor in the source and voltage at the gate there. So we have RD, RS, RG there. All right, so self-bias, extra source resistance. Okay, the reason this changes from the above circuit is remember VGS is always between voltage ground and, uh, sorry, voltage at the gate and voltage at the source, which in this case is driven directly to uh, zero volts. Whereas in this circuit, 
BGS is between date and source, but the source is not equal to zero volts. All right, we're going to have, based on the current flowing through this FET, we're going to have a voltage drop across RS. All right, therefore, BGS is equal to minus ID times RS. All right, we have VG is equal to, uh, sorry, VGS is equal to VG minus BS, just by the definition of it. And therefore, we get voltage at the gate, that's zero, zero minus voltage across, voltage at the source will be the current through that resistor times its resistance, ID RS. So we can work out what the voltage gate to source would be given characteristics of the circuit. For example, if we knew the current associated with it, um, or uh, parameters such as IDSS or, or such such parameters, we could work that out from this circuit. The only other uh, bias to be aware of is the voltage divider bias, and that one is nothing more than similar to what you've seen in your common emitter amplifier analysis. Okay, so VDD. Still have our source resistance. Okay, so we have RD, RS, R1, R2. Voltage at the gate. Okay, source and drain. And this is a voltage divider bias. And this one is much more stable for amplifiers. Same trick exists as we saw above, that the voltage at the source is not going to be equal to ground because of the voltage drop across RS. So just watch out for that in your analysis. All right, we can use something like ID is equal to voltage at the gate minus voltage VGS divided by RS. All right, so if we know that voltage um, and we know the voltage across this device, we know that resistance, we can calculate ID, or vice versa, if we know ID, calculate BGS. Right? But it's nothing more than the same expressions that you would use in analyzing any circuit. They're not complicated. All right, so that's biasing in terms of JFETs. Uh, for switching, we want to be over here in the ohmic region. Uh, whereas if we're an amplifier, we want to be in the active or saturation region. And we're really not interested in amplifiers in this course, for FETs at least anyway. All right, so remember your drain curves. Remember we want to be in the ohmic region because of things like having a low RDS, which infers that we have a low voltage drop. And we get a lower voltage drop going this way. We also get lower current. So we accept some compromise. We'll have some voltage drop to be able to switch the required current. Uh, we had a look at the gate, or also known as the fixed bias circuit, which is simply putting the load above the FET. It's known as low side switching. Pull down resistor, keep things operating sensibly. Control voltage via the gate there. VGS is the same as VG, okay, because S is connected to ground. Um, we can calculate ID set, draw our load line, work out our Q point, and based on the uh, construction of the circuit and the way the FETs operate, we guarantee that we operate in the ohmic region. If we want to operate in the active region, we can use self-bias, which is a simpler method to have a look how it operates, or we can use the voltage divider bias, which is more stable. However, both of these self-bias and voltage divider bias are for amplifiers, where the gate or fixed is more interesting for us for switching.